Day to day on the space station, I ended up spending about 337 days overall across three missions there. Uh, you see what's wonderful about it. You see what's needed really for human beings and what works well over a long period of time. But you also know, see the limitations. I saw an inflated life module just a few years ago for the first time ever. My first impression when I walked inside, it took my breath away. What excites me as an astronaut though, especially, is the different ways that you can build out the inside of the life module. Whether you want a uh, up-down pattern, a radial pattern, there's different purposes, different goals for each kind of a living structure. We're testing our next full-scale habitat, which we call the Life 285. This is our second test of this system. The reason we're here is ultimate burst pressure. And why we do ultimate burst pressure, it is to validate our structure. The second burst test will really get us the design, repeatability, and architecture as we go towards our certification of the pressure shell of the life habitat. How this test differs from the last test is in a few ways. One of the most apparent and obvious ways is in the blanking plate. This has a different metallic blanking plate interface compared to what we did in December. Uh, this interface uh, allows us a great opportunity to expand and have a, a larger window. For this test in particular, some of the things that we're looking for are some of those tricky spots where hard goods meet soft goods. So you'll see those blanking plates up there are made of metal. And then we have webbing next to it, right? So those spots of interaction are really important spots that we need to keep an eye on and we have a lot of sensors there to understand what's happening. This test and the prior two tests are the highest loaded inflatable test ever. We're verifying the ability to build a 27 foot diameter module and that's not only applicable to Life 285 but that's also applicable to a Life 500. So the last two tests that we did exceeded the NASA's 4x requirement for pressurization and we exceeded it by 33% uh, and 27% respectively. And so what that means is we have shown the ability to build a larger module than 27 feet, and that's what's utilized in a Life 1400, which is 150% times the habitable volume of the entire International Space Station in one seven meter launch. Well, what you're seeing here today is obviously our pressure shell, and that is our basket weave Vectran, an interwoven basket weave. Um, this has been around for thousands of years. It's highly resilient, it's got a lot of strength. What's wonderful to find out is that it's stronger than steel. It actually is as strong, if not actually stronger and more protective against micrometeoroid uh, showers than your standard aluminum hull. On space and on orbit, you're gonna see an exterior layer which is called MLI, multi-layer insulation blanket. Think of this as a blanket that's gonna keep you warm or cool on the inside. If you peel that outer layer off, you're gonna see MMOD. You peel another layer, you're gonna see MMOD. You peel another layer, you'll see MMOD. As you go through those layers, you peel that last layer, you get to the core. The core is our soft goods that you see right there, our pressure shell, our restraint layer. You strip down that core, you're gonna see what we call our metallic core on the inside of it. That's what holds all of our systems. So although we say this is a soft goods habitat, we still use metallics. We just designed this system to optimize the use of those metallics to allow the soft goods to meet its maximum performance. So our micrometeoroid orbital debris layer, uh, what we're doing is we're doing testing at the White Sands testing facility in New Mexico. We get different layers of different materials and then they shoot it with uh, high-speed projectiles. They basically use a 50 caliber uh, rifle to shoot these projectiles and then see if they're able to penetrate it. Getting to space is really hard and we're here for the challenge. And it takes a lot of steps over a long time to do it well, to do it right. And so the test that we're doing today is gonna to prove that our structure is gonna be safe, safe to perform that microgravity research, safe for habitation, and safe to make all those changes that are gonna make life on Earth better. Control, go ahead and pressurize the test article. Everybody good? I'm going to give photogrammetry 10 seconds and then we're going to start pressurizing. Go see our space, go LC Dover, go NASA. 45 PSI, 45 PSI. 50 PSI, 50 PSI. 55 PSI, 55 PSI. Yes, I think we're good, Gerard. That should be, that leak rate looks really good. 60 PSI, 60 PSI. 65 PSI, 65 PSI. 70 PSI, 70 PSI. Everything looking good, guys? Controls, you good? Oh, baby. Yep. Here we go.
PSI. Great test, great results. We're very happy. Uh, we got within 5% of our uh, full scale one to update the blanking plate design so that it's lighter and accommodates a, a larger window and then still hit within 5%. Just fantastic results. This test that we just did today, which takes a second time that we've done a burst test back to back for a full scale Life 285. This demonstrates that Sierra Space is leading building real hardware. We're designing our Life 500, eight blanking plates, nine meters in height, nine meters in diameter. We've got two more subscale Life 10 burst tests and some creep tests that we're gonna be doing. Our goal is to build platforms in space to benefit life on Earth. This unit demonstrates that we take this architecture, we take these processes. This is serious work for us. We're gonna make a difference. We're gonna change the world.